<laughs> Welcome to Con's Better Health Coffee Table Talk number 37. Can you guys believe that? 37. So, I'm having my popcorn. I love popcorn. And my daughter brought a microwave home from college because she was only at college for two weeks. So I ran out and bought a bunch of organic popcorn. I know that sounds, um, what's that redundant word? What's that word for? It doesn't sound right. Ah. Uh, and Sammy does the opposite of me. Eats once a day late in the evening. Snacks healthy and drinks lots of water in between. I usually get up and have a full tumbler of water with vitamins and supplements and then coffee and I don't get hungry till afternoon and then I eat a big lunch and then I eat uh, popcorn and snacky vegetables after that. Yeah, it is. Sammy, it's a type of fasting. Um, Sammy didn't start doing it intentionally. I didn't intentionally either, but what happens is when I get up and take my supplements with a full thing of water, I'm too full and not hungry. And then the lunch meal is usually a huge salad. Yes, Phoenix is like me, drinks a lot of coffee. Um, and then... I start to get hungry before bedtime, but I don't want to eat that late, so I'll eat like a bowl of popcorn. But usually my bowls are pretty big size bowls. But lemon water and cucumber water is really good. And salmon drinks a lot of coffee too. Mm. We had somebody pop one and pop back off. <laughs> but so a lot of us have small businesses, and I kind of wanted to chit chat about that tonight. Record keeping, I've had people come to me because they know I do taxes personally since I was 16 and I've owned businesses before and be like, hey, you want to do my taxes? I'm like, where, where are your records? Um, in a box. I'm like, oh, oh nah. <laughs> Couldn't pay me enough. Oh, thanks, Sammy. So record keeping. Excel or Google Docs should be your lover. Like, you should totally be in love with Excel spreadsheets. I actually have one I shared with a couple people already to help keep track of sales. Um, so your daily sales, I have two different spreadsheets. One that's got sales and one that's got bills from sales. Pen and paper girl is fine until the end of the year, girl. Trust me. Your spreadsheets need to become your lover. You will not be happy at the year, year end, the end of the year um, with pen and paper. I was pen and paper girl. I'm a dot matrix girl. If that tells you how old I am, you already know how old I am, I think. But let me tell you what. If you keep a spreadsheet, and I have two that are on my desktop, but I also have a QuickBooks Premier Retail Edition for desktop as well. So, I'm one of those everything has to match type of people, because if I ever get audited, the auditor's not going to hate me, and I'm not going to hate the auditor. Thank you for saying this is helpful. So, the reason you would hate being a pen and paper girl at the end of the year is if you were using a 10 key calculator that had a roll of paper and you were trying to figure out what you paid for shipping, you'd use three rolls of that paper girl, trust me. Three whole rolls, if not more. The spreadsheet for sales and the spreadsheet for 
bills from sales. Sammy, I mean, uh, Phoenix loves Google Docs because she can pull it up on her phone as well as her laptop, and that is so true. Your docs and your sheets. Google has spreadsheets like Excel. They have docs like Word. They have Google Drive. You can share with each other. All kinds of goody stuff. So the one for sales has invoice number, date that they paid, because I keep them monthly, the tabs at the bottom. So I have a spreadsheet, but I have monthly tabs on this one. The other one has weekly tabs. Sort of, kind of, but not really. But also, you don't want to make a mistake. So you have to go through these um, two or three different functions in order to make sure everything matches. Okay, so I'll tell you how I do it. And then, of course, we're all different. And we all got our little niches. Like me talking and chewing. I don't usually do that, but this popcorn's too good to put down. <laughs> so my spreadsheet for sales has date, invoice number, or excuse me, invoice number, the date they paid. It has a column for the amount that they paid for the product. The next column is taxes. Now, because e-commerce, you do not have to pay sales tax until you've reached a certain threshold. Most states have adapted that rule of thumb, including my state. So because I'm e-commerce, the only sales tax I pay is going to be to people that purchase in North Carolina. So my second column has a formula that says, excuse me, invoice number, date, amount of product. My fourth column has a formula that says number four equals number three times 1.07, which is the sales tax in the state of North Carolina for my county, because some counties are higher, okay? But I only put that formula in the cell if the purchaser lives in my state. So it's not all the way down the, the thing. Okay. Then the next one says uh, shipping. It's what I charged them to ship. Okay. So then the next column is a total. And it'll have the total of the product, the tax, what I charged them for shipping. It'll have that total. Then the last column doesn't necessarily need to stay there because it is on the other spreadsheet, but I just leave it there because that's how I started it. Is you guys saw all that popcorn? Um, the amount my processor charges me. So you guys know I have three processors. I have PayPal. I have Square who processes credit cards when people don't want to use PayPal. And I have a firm now. So what that last column is, is how much they charged me. Okay. So that at the total at the bottom has what they've paid, the amount of tax I owe North Carolina, and then the amount they paid for shipping, and then the amount I've paid the processors to process my, um, payments okay now that just helps me keep up with the monthly running total okay yep so Sammy put it in a little message block and probably so she can go back and look at it later which is pretty smart um, my other spreadsheet is weekly because I do paperwork on Saturday mornings, preferably when I don't get sidetracked when I get out of bed. Um, the other spreadsheet has weekly. And my week runs Saturday to Friday. So anything that has processed through uh, this evening will be on tomorrow. 
screenshotting that little formula was a smart idea too. So every week I start a new tab with that week's dates. And on that one it has that total amount that my client has paid. So my invoice here, I had a sale on the website earlier today and the total that the client paid after the discount because she did get some tumbles and use the monthly discount. So she made her purchase, she added shipping, she got her discount and the total that she paid was $63.70. Okay. That goes in column one on the second spreadsheet. That should be the same as the column on the first spreadsheet. Okay. Then I have the processor next, how much they charge me to process. So like in this one, Pay PayPal charged me $2.15. So that would be in the next column. Now two more columns. Okay. One says USPS and one, the other says pirate ship. If you don't know about pirate ship, that is the way to ship if you're not shipping out of PayPal. If you're shipping out of PayPal and the order was $51 or more, pirate ship it because they cover the first hundred insurance. You don't have to pay extra like you do in PayPal. I can't stop. Uh, I love it. I love dropping it. Okay, so the second spreadsheet is done weekly. I have all those totals. Um, the amount they paid, the processor, the amount the shipping physically cost me because you all know it varies as sellers. As clients, you should know that it's a little cheaper than the total $9 to ship, but we also are putting in tape, bubble wrap, gifts, all kinds of goodies. So we usually round up our shipping. Now on my website, consbetterhealth.com, U.S. priority shipping is $9. It doesn't matter how big of a box you get. So, just think that, you know, if you're paying $9 for one thing to get it priority shipped, yes, you may have paid an extra quarter that time, but you're going to get it back the next time you make a bigger order <laughs> with me. So, we have shipping. Oh, then after the shipping, I have that same invoice number and the client's name. Um, that that helps me keep up, helps me learn my people because y'all know I'm all about my people. Uh, then PayPal has this wonderful little um, reports that you can do. So on Saturday morning, I go and log into my PayPal. I pull my balance affecting amounts. And it'll print, let's say Sammy purchased this order here, and it was $63.70 with $215 um, processing, and um, I shipped the box for $7.75 bubble envelope, okay? PayPal, if I ship it out of PayPal, it'll be up there, but if I ship it out of Square, it's going to be on that other spreadsheet. Oh, and my spreadsheets are color-coded, all right? So... Finger licking good. The let's see if we can do this. Let's do this. The color coding is so I can work faster because it's work smart but efficient and fast and efficient. I don't know. Like it's just how I do things because I've been in accounting for so many years. Like, so many years, I can't even tell you when I started. Um, I want to do bills. Bills from sales. So, what I do to get this information into uh, my QuickBooks, run the PayPal report for the week, 
And then I'm going to try to take a picture of this without everybody's name on it. Okay, let's see how that turned out. So, that PayPal report will have these numbers, okay? So, hopefully it's not too bad to look at right here. Uh, ee, bright light. Oh, and I forgot I adjusted the computer, too. Oh, come on. Shucks. And I can't drop pictures in the daggone thing to show you guys. Alright, so I'll just tell you what I got here. Is a took a picture of my weekly sales. So PayPal is going to have that total as your client's amount that they paid. They're going to have that PayPal fee, except you see that pink one? That's square. Okay. And then these teal two over here where I shipped with PayPal, USPS through PayPal. And the next column is yellow. I don't know if you guys can catch it, but that is where I shipped from Pirate Ship. So Pirate Ship won't be on the PayPal uh, report. And the square fee won't be, nor the square deposit, but I have the other backup paperwork for those. And what I do is I take that PayPal report for the week. And I match. Um, I match up the... Um, lost that picture. Mm. I match up the total of the invoice that PayPal says I got that money. Then I match the... It'll have on the same row what their fee was. So I'll mark off. Got it. And then if I shipped with them, I'll mark off the shipping because it'll be on another row. Um, if I made a purchase, it'll be on there. I make sure I get that bill put in my QuickBooks. So everything's on that PayPal report, which is really awesome. So you can make sure that your numbers match. Now I spend a good hour or two on Saturday mornings when sales are slower. Um, when sales are higher, I can spend a good six hours just doing pick work on Saturdays. But I can file my taxes as soon as my 1099 hits PayPal because I'm already done. I went into my QuickBooks. I pulled my profit and loss. I plugged my numbers in to my uh, TurboTax. And the only thing I'm waiting for is that 1099 from PayPal. Once that hits, I just make sure that those numbers match because there was some discrepancy last year, but I did it all. Last year, mobile... But at the end of the year, I bought my Premier Retail desktop. Okay. I have an external hard drive, so I do my backups in case some crazy stuff goes down with my computer, which is super smart to do. And yes, the computer was a financial um, investment, but well worth it well well worth it to have the desktop because especially using these um platforms where we are on social media it is popcorn kernel so much easier to grab a picture and my pictures i tend to label price and item name um, I don't really have size in most of my photo names, but <clears throat> I do have quarters in my pictures to judge the one inch quarters or an inch. If you're a newer seller and don't know that, a quarter is an inch. So, um, desktop makes it super easy to grab a picture, copy the name, paste it in a group. Um, also... Sammy, I think you were talking last night about that sales format. So when I copy paste the name, I'll take off dollar sign 22, whatever the dollar amount is. So you got pictures, you got to copy and paste off your picture of the product. You take out the dollar amount with the dollar sign. You post it. You immediately click the dots, edit, and add back that price. And it's bam, bam, bam. Okay. Now... 
That said, everyone knows I'm going full-fledged website because it's still uber time consuming to have to do it that way versus here's a link and the link shows you the photo. Facebook was doing when I shared my product from my website it was doing the photo, the description and price, and then you just click that to purchase. But of course, Facebook wants to be all shady, so it doesn't show up that way on the phone, it does on the desktop. Okay, so I've been playing with that. I'm trying to find something that makes everybody happy, um, including myself. But the, um, Okay, on your screenshot, you missed something. Oh, no, no, you got shipping costs. Okay, I was thinking two rows. But my shipping is, I ship from two places. I ship from PayPal and I ship from Pirate Ship. And if you haven't checked them out, check them out. If you're talking about sales in general, you should include every sale, whether it's cash, check, credit card, PayPal, etc. You should not ever sell through PayPal and have them pay you friends and family. There is no guarantees for you as a seller or them as a purchaser if they pay you friends and family because they're considered not paying for a service or item. So, the answer is you include every sale that you make. But, taxes is just for your state. E-commerce until you've made 200 sales or over $100,000 in sales to one state you don't pay that state. You just pay your own where you reside or where your shop is. Yes, goods and services, not friends and family from PayPal. So, the, um, oh, the little spreadsheet that I have. When I print out that spreadsheet that I tried to take a picture of that's not showing up good on the camera, um, I'll print out as many as it takes to do, so I have my um, deposit, then I have my PayPal fees, and if I have a pink one or a square or a firm one, then I have to print more copies, and I'll just take out the others and then do the undo so I don't mess it up. It's an Excel thing. If you're not a Excel guru, I can try to do another one where we can show exactly what I'm talking about but um so I print one for the deposits one for the fee or fees would be multiple spreadsheets one for um shipping through USPS through PayPal one for shipping through pirate ship and what I do is make sure that when I go to um, put all that in my QuickBooks that everything matches, the PayPal uh, report matches, the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet amount matches what I'm keying in the QuickBooks, QuickBooks matches what I said I spent that week. So I have a lot of check marks, I have a lot of pencils, I just sharpened my pencil because I was like, I really got to get off my bum and sharpen this pencil, it was getting really bad. But um, thank you for saying I'm amazing, I'm just me girl, you know that. But um. QuickBooks Desktop Premiere is the shizzle snizzle dip. So, that one you can get for free on your phone. It's You can't see things. You can't check the numbers. You can't really get in there, so to speak. The Desktop Premiere, you can add your mileage. You can add um, 
you can, gosh, there's so much you can do in there. All of my inventory. So if, if you came to me on a message, either via my um, website or Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you find me, YouTube, anywhere you find me. If you came to me and said, hey, yes, the PayPal app does kind of suck bad. I worship my desktop like an old school desktop worshiper. <laughs> I have an external hard drive, so in case of crazy stuff, and I keep everything on the external now. Um, new pictures get copied over. Uh, anything that sells gets put in a folder on the external hard drive. Um, QuickBook back, backups get put on there and documents that I have. Um, all, all that stuff is backed up on the external because computers do crash. Okay? Ask my stalker if she's around. She had that problem late last year. Phoenix says, yes, PayPal app sucks, and, and it really does. I quit using that well over a year ago. I'll get in bed and have a client message me about an invoice, or can you, you know, send me an invoice for XYZ? <coughs> Oops. <coughs> I'm turning pink. <coughs> I inhaled the popcorn. Oh, no, I'm crying. <laughs> okay. As I choke to death in front of you guys, ah, <clears throat> stop talking and eating, Shannon. It's going to get stale, though, and it's not the same when it's stale and chewy. But anyway, ah, um, I'll get on that PayPal on my phone, and I'll just be like, nah, man, you got to wait till tomorrow. Ah, don't you dare choke on camera. <clears throat> well, I did a little, but <clears throat> luckily I caught it when it hit the back like right around here and I was like oh nope wrong pipe okay it only made me tear up a little bit um but we're all good I'm still breathing I lost my napkin though where'd my napkin go I got dirty fingers okay where was I um I'm gonna lose my mind next the desktop is super great for the platforms now Instagram you cannot post from a desktop so strange you can only do it from your phone but I get the kernels in my teeth a lot with popcorn but YouTube when I do the shares from YouTube and from my website, which is sponsored through Wix.com, um, I can share to different platforms except Instagram, okay? Yeah, Instagram, you can only use your device. You cannot use a desktop. I found out the hard way. I was like, where's the darn post button? I'm trying and trying and trying. And then somewhere it said, you can only post from your phone or device or whatever. And I'm like, really? But... The good thing about having all of your information balanced and matching um, on a weekly basis is good for me because then I don't get overwhelmed and spend a day or two trying to make sure everything matches. You just do it on a weekly basis. It's super quick, super easy. All your bills are in there. All your payments and deposits and everything are in there. Um, it is kind of strange for Instagram. I didn't know that either until uh, a good six or eight months ago. But the um, reports in QuickBooks, once you've put in your mileage, put in your postage, put in, you know, this, that, and the other. Like, I have a stat here as I was entering bills for the week um, that doesn't include my weekend report shipping what I've paid and fees that I've paid okay these are things like Facebook ads is the first one um, gym gyms on display I buy from them quite often they have some cool stuff gyms on display um, 
the download I did the other day for the mindfulness stuff to like finagle and make my own. PayPal credit, because I did use some credit to make a purchase. Um, that's a copy of one of those. Uh, that's that mindful practice with the breathing we did the other day. Um, so, this stuff is already paid, but I put it in QuickBooks to make sure that QuickBooks knows how much my business has. Okay. I should be claiming my living room where I do everything as my office space, question mark, or no, since I'm e-commerce. Yes. Okay. So, that's not in QuickBooks, but what you have to have is a dedicated space. So, I have this dedicated space here and all the way behind me and all the way down that way. Okay. So, I have this whole dedicated space and it's used for business purposes. The QuickBooks Desktop Premier Edition, I think, cost me $360. Okay. If you get a desktop, it's the best. Girl, oh, I was saying a minute ago, all my inventory is in there. So, if I'm at work here in my office space, <laughs> um, what I do is click on QuickBooks first thing in the morning and log in so it's open all day every day like some people do their email I do that with my QuickBooks so if somebody messages me on one of the umpteen platforms and says hey I saw you had selenite spheres those ones that are TV like optical spheres how many do you have I click on QuickBooks and I click on inventory and I type in selenite and I hit enter or click the hourglass you can't hit enter on QuickBooks some crazy dumb reason but click the hourglass or looking glass and and it brings up all my selenite then I look for the sphere and I click it and I look over to the right and it tells me what I paid for each sphere what I'm selling each sphere for and how many of them bloody suckers I have so I can just be like, hey, Sammy, yes, I have some of those left. Click, click, click while I'm typing to you, and then click back and go, I have 24 of them. I think I have 23 because my memory is not that great, but it's 24 stuck in my head. Maybe it's because the 24th one's over there in the giveaway. <laughs> okay, so back to the... Um, taxes your workspace. There's a printer here, two cabinets. There's crystals down that way, and there's crystals all over the place. Not everything is in the exact space, but what you do is when you go through TurboTax, it'll say, Did you have a home office? Yes. How much um, was your office used so many months of the year? Yes. Because uh, for me, it was 12 months. Okay. And then it'll say, how big is your space square foot? So if you don't know how to measure a square foot, you just take a ruler, which would be obnoxious, or a measuring tape along one, which would be easier, and measure um, the length and the width and multiply those and you get your square footage. But then they'll ask you how big is the whole place. Excuse me. So you have to know of your whole square footage, how many square feet is your office space. So you need both numbers. And you put that in, and TurboTax has been my go-to forever. I did H&R Block once or twice, didn't care for it as much. Um, and I did something else one time. And then when I had my HVAC company, my ex didn't trust me to do the taxes, so he wanted to pay an accountant. So we did. But the accountant was pretty impressed because I have, you know, bookkeeping skills. Um, so, TurboTax has been my go-to most of my life. They keep your stuff on file. I have some ins and outs of that as well. And like if you ever get married and stuff, it, it gets sticky. They like to put the man first, even if it's your account, and then that don't work out. And so, for a business, keep your own TurboTax. 
if you decide to use it. I'm guessing any of those tax softwares are going to be that way. But, okay, so, because of my QuickBooks Premier and my profit and loss and putting in my mileage and everything else that they have, um, oh, I already got all that junk in TurboTax on the 1st of January. I was like, I'm not doing any sales, I'm not doing anything else, I'm doing my taxes because I need to see whether or not I'm going to owe or get a return. So I, I prepped it all, I'm just waiting for the 1099 and I check every day to see if PayPal is sending it. <laughs> After that, I can dump it in there and hit submit. Okay. But, this is what I've done my whole life is um, bookkeeping, accounting, taxes, that kind of thing. I've been a numbers girl. I slept through math and made straight A's. So, um, I wanted to be able to tell you guys a couple tips and pointers for those of us who have small businesses, especially. And with 2020 happening and the pandemic, so many of us have turned to trying to uh, run a small business or downsize our business um, from the big retail world to an e-commerce or smaller and not, not know how to do these things. I'm glad that I'm helping you, Sammy. That's what I do, girl. So, um, I'm trying to think of anything I've missed or can think of. While I finish my popcorn before it gets too stale. Because <laughs> super stale popcorn is the worst. And I take a probiotic before bed, so I really need to finish the popcorn and give it time to digest before I take the probiotic. Um, but, yeah. They do have a free QuickBooks app on the phone. It, I don't like it as much. The mileage, um, they have like an app thing that you can swipe if it was for work or personal. And um, the, the mapping, it gets weird and it shows up stuff that you're just like, what is this? I wasn't there or that's not where I started and stopped type of deal. So I don't really care for that. But you can go into the desktop and put in any kind of trip you made, whether it be to the post office, to Sam's Club to buy tape, or Walmart to buy bubble wrap, or, you know, whatever the case may be, um, if you're traveling for business. Delivery, if you're delivering to your neighbor of five miles up the road or whatever. Um... Sam, is there anything you can think of to ask me? I think I'm trying to hit all the bases. Not at the moment. Okay. I'm sure... If you decide to get a desktop and QuickBooks Premier Retail Edition, you'll have tons. Because if you're not super familiar with accounting software, you'll be super lost. <laughs> but I actually love it. Now, the, the reason also to go full on website with Wix is if you make a purchase on the Wix site, it will, even if you pay with PayPal, it will pull the item onto your invoice, um, and then I don't have to send an invoice with all the same stuff I'm going to put in QuickBooks and do another invoice. Now, I was told, and I haven't done a lot of research on it because, you know, everybody's still kind of stuck on the whole platform drama stuff where I don't want to click a link and go buy it. I want you to deal with me. And I don't mean that rudely. 
I mean that like there are a lot of great customers and clients and buyers on Facebook but there are also a lot of not so great and there are a lot of times where we put in way more time and energy as a seller than we're being paid for I guess you could say like okay at my day job that I quit I was making over $28 an hour but I can be on Facebook and sell one $5 item and takes an hour so I'm making less than $5 an hour so I prefer the website it's very time consuming to update the website and keep it updated it's very time consuming to do a lot of the work that I do that everybody doesn't see therefore not being on the platforms that are out there Pinterest Facebook YouTube Instagram all those platforms and constantly putting new stuff new stuff new stuff if I could put it all in one place then hey do you have this yes here's a link hey do you have that yes here's a link it's so much easier and then when you purchase on the Wix site it immediately gives me the information I don't have to key it in to um, PayPal and QuickBooks so I can just put the invoice in QuickBooks once it's paid it's all done said and done if that makes sense if I'm saying it right but the um, I, there's just so much <laughs> it's one of those things where I wish everybody could just kind of stop by for a day to see what I do type of thing the profit and loss statement at year-end and QuickBooks because you can change your dates you can pull it monthly weekly daily yearly whenever you want to look at it and see where you stand in your business um, when you pull that at let's say year end to do your taxes it gives you your sales your cost of goods your which is what you're buying to resell your office supplies your teeth and bubble wrap it gives you this whole list fees for PayPal um, advertising whether it's business cards or Facebook ads um, or paying someone to help you uh, advertise um, I mean there's just a list there's so much and um, most of it's super easy and of course anyone who decides that they're gonna go that route and if you need some help hit me up I'm usually available for a quick question or two I can't believe this whole bag is still not gone and popping it in the microwave you usually have a whole bunch of kernels left in the bottom of your bag I'm having a hard time finding the three three unpopped four no wait four five five unpopped kernels from doing it on this stove <laughs> that's pretty cool and it saves me from getting zapped with radiation <laughs> microwaved all right well that took about 45 minutes um we didn't do a card pull but we just kind of went over the don't be a pen and paper gal or guy cough cough if somebody I know watches this I'm talking about him <laughs> and um, keep your stuff where you have the spreadsheets that you can uh, total those columns you can put a total at the bottom and it will tell you how much you sold that week or month it'll tell you how much you paid PayPal that week or month it'll tell you how much you paid to ship that week or month or however you end up doing it 
You're very welcome. And then you can have way quicker, way easier way to say, 2021, I paid X for shipping versus, oh my gosh, I have to add up this whole stack of paper and, oh my gosh, how in the heck am I ever going to figure out Oh shucks, I hit the wrong button, I gotta start over. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> You're welcome, Samantha. I appreciate you hanging out and listening to me. And definitely message me if you have more questions. Um, I am definitely here for you guys. And I love you. And uh, Phoenix, I think you're gone, but I still love you anyway. And... Anyone else that's watching after, when you have the replay, feel free to message me if you have any questions, and I am going to call it a night. Love you guys. You too. Have a great night, Sammy. I'm going to finish this popcorn and wash my bowl. Hmm. <laughs>